it, it, pretty friends. I just farted. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, fellow foodie friends. It is day two, and we are in the Everglades. Yahoo! <laughs> Howdy, fellow foodie friends. Welcome to day two of our Florida adventures. We're in the Everglades today, but before we get started, if you like food reviews and travel videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, as well as the notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any of the fun. That way you can be part of the Who's Your Daddy family. So today is day two of our Florida adventures. We're in the Everglades and we're gonna take a boat tour and then we're gonna explore the national park. So let's go. Let's go. You excited for the airboat tour? Yes. I wanna be like Horatio Kane when he's going after somebody who committed a murder. Looks like we're gonna do some, I don't know. <laughs> what? Some airboat tour in. <laughs> there they are. Hopefully we'll get to see some gators while we're out there. If you're ever in the Everglades, I highly suggest taking one of these airboat tours. There's all kinds of companies that offer them. We went with a place called the Sawgrass Recreation Park in Weston, Florida. They have options for every budget, from sunrise tours to nighttime tours to your own private tours. We decided to go with the group tour. It was an airboat adventure package and animal sanctuary admission. It included a 40 minute adventure tour through the Everglades and admission into their animal sanctuary afterwards. It also included free ear protection, which is really important because those fans are really loud. So make sure to find out ahead of time if they supply ear protection. Alligators are really black. And, uh, if the thing isn't really, really black, it's not an alligator. And the bumpiness part, that would mean it would be his back, and they're not going to have their back in the stage. The only part they'll give you is the head and the snout. They're not out here in the snout. If you're interested in taking the same tour that we did, I will put a link down in the description to the Sawgrass Recreation Park. But like I said, there's all kinds of options, a lot of companies down in the Everglades. So make sure to do your homework, do your research, and find one that works for you. I also did want to mention that this particular tour that we took was $26.95 per person for adults and $16.95 per person for children 4 to 12. If you bring a child three and under, it's free, although I'm not sure I would recommend it. These boats go up to 40 miles an hour, so there's a lot of wind and it's easy to lose a hat or lose other loose articles, and there's no seat belts, so you ride at your own risk, but that's probably why they have you sign a waiver ahead of time. But don't worry, we all felt safe and had a great time. It was so much fun. Next up was the animal sanctuary that they had out back where we were able to explore all of the exhibits of native animals at our leisure. Look at the peacock. Hey buddy. They're so tiny. So do they not eat the tortoises then? No, they're too small. I mean the gators are too small. They're the front that is a giant tortoise. So if you can if you can see, there's a giant gator underneath the water staying cool. Probably 11 foot long. Yeah, and there's a smaller one swimming away from us. I think the bigger one is the boy. His name's Cannibal because he ate his last girlfriend. I think the smaller one is Crystal. Uh, it's Cannibal and Crystal, and they have a nest up there on land. But this guy is huge. Look at him, he's looking right at me. Feet, 800 pounds, and 65 years old. The 65. mom, yep, 65. The mom, she actually just laid eggs about uh, two weeks ago. So she's guarding a nest, and it's in the back corner, in the direction that she was facing. Ok, 
Okay, we are on our way to the Everglades, but we decided to stop at this famous fruit stand called Robert Is Here. Robert Is Here fruit stand. They've got all kinds of fresh fruit, produce, all kinds of other stuff. Let's check it out. Robert Is Here is a family owned and operated fruit stand in Homestead, Florida that specializes in rare and exotic fruits and vegetables, mostly grown right on their very own farm. Although the location started off as a literal fruit stand on the side of the road, it's grown into a complete tourist destination, equipped with an animal farm, play area, picnic tables, and even live music on the weekends. Hello! That's an emu. Emu. What's it called again? Mamie Sapote. We got some Mamie Sapote. Mame. Maybe my taste buds are real. It's good, but... I taste a cheesecake. Is that cheesecake or... It's more like pumpkin pie. Than cheesecake. It's pumpkin supposed pie. to taste kind of like pumpkin pie. I don't taste pumpkin pie. I taste pumpkin pie. Yeah, I taste cheesecake. I know. That's good, though. Very flushy. You're yeah, very flushy. This is Mamie Sapote. Mommy. Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. It's like a, it doesn't. It has like a cheesecakey pumpkin pie flavor. That's re really weird, but really good. I like it. I want to try it. Hey, wait. Wait, there's chickens. I want to taste the chicken. Cookerico. I really want to try the black sapote because it's supposed to taste like chocolate pudding. It's really, really dark, and they said it's only ripe like between November and. Uh, February, April, something like that. So unfortunately, we're not here when that's in season, so they didn't have any. Okay, we made it to Everglades National Park. We are at the Ernest F. Co. Visitor Center. And somebody doesn't want to be here. Not me. Mm. I don't want to be here. Unlike most national parks, the Everglades National Park has three separate entrances which are not connected. So that means that a car is an absolute necessity because those three entrances are all at least one hour from each other. And there's no public transportation within the park, which has a lot of waterways and it spans over 1.5 million acres of South Florida. We went to the Ernest F. Co. Visitor Center located at the Homestead entrance. It's open 365 days a year. It offers educational displays, orientation films, maps, brochures, bathrooms, and a bookstore that sells books, postcards, souvenirs, and most importantly, insect repellent. After leaving the Visitor Center, our next stop was Royal Palm, which had access to a couple different hiking trails. Okay, so they said that vultures are really bad here. They like to eat all the rubber pieces on your car, so they gave us complimentary tarps to cover the car. So <laughs> with the luggage carrier, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Okay, there are two trails from the Royal Palm Visitor Center. The Anhinga Trail and the Gumbo Limbo Trail. The Anhinga Trail is around this freshwater slough where you might be able to see some wildlife at close range and the gumbo limbo goes through the trees to see these gumbo limbo trees. So I think we're gonna go the gumbo limbo trail first. So we finally found a strangler fig. I've been looking for one. A strangler fig is a type of tree where the birds transport the seeds and they land like in the tops of other trees and the roots will grow down and suffocate the other tree. Or in this case, in case it looks like a fallen tree but they'll come down over it until they reach the ground and they'll strangle the host tree. And it looks like there are about three strangler fig trees that grew over the top of this fallen tree. And it like makes a cage of roots. That's really cool. Very hot and humid. It's gotta be 100% humidity. We're walking through the jungle basically. Oh, that looks like it might be another strangler fig up ahead. Did you guys see the strangler fig? I think that's another one right there. And I think this is one of those gumbo limbo trees. It feels like kind of waxy on the outside. Okay, so this is one of the gumbo limbo trees. One of the nicknames it has is a tourist tree because the bark looks like sunburnt peeling skin. <laughs> I guess tourists come and get sunburnt and their skin peels. The um, Native Americans used to call it Naked, Naked Indian. 
Sorry, I just did have a bug buzzing in my ear. Oh, I just got bit by a mosquito. Down what? This is where the alligators race. Oh, okay. Okay. Too bad we missed that. Look at that swamp. I did say that mosquitoes weren't bothering me and I just had one on me. Make sure you wear bug spray if you come down here. Definitely hot and humid. Drink lots of water and use bug spray. And bring cold water, because my husband brought warm water. Warm water is more easily absorbed by your body. Screw that crap. <laughs> After hiking the Gumbo Limbo Trail, next was the Anhinga Trail, which we actually got the pleasure of having guided by one of the park rangers. They are a true fig. They're an actual type of fig. Oh, so that, that's, a, that's an invasive species, so we don't like those. Um, they came from the pet trade. That's an agama lizard. Uh, they love hanging out around here. But yeah, the strangler figs are awesome. Um, they're not truly a parasite even though they eventually kill what they're growing on. Um, but yeah, they'll they'll start growing on it, usually caught in like a crotch of a tree, which is just like where a branch comes out from a trunk. And then they'll send out a first feeder root. Once that feeder root hits the ground, and it can go a long way. Once it hits the ground, um, it's eventually going to be game over uh, for what it's growing on. Because it'll continue sending out roots around. Those roots are going to invade the root piece of its host tree, and that's how it ends up killing. Um, it takes all the water and nutrients from the root space of um, that area. And eventually, the main tree dies, and you're left with this husk that grew around it. Uh, but the gumbo limbos, they have adaptations to prevent that from happening. Uh, they jokingly call these a tourist tree. You see how they, um, uh, the bark flakes? They are, uh, they do that. They have that naturally shedding bark. So they can, like when there's a young strangler fig growing on it, they can actually shed it off. Um, they also grow pretty columnar. They don't have a lot of sharp angles. So not lots of places for stuff to get stuffy and start growing. Um, and they're also well adapted to be in a windy place like we are. You know, like the Caribbean, hurricanes. Because if you look at their a little bit closer at their bark, you'll see that they have green in it. They actually have chlorophyll in their bark. Huh. They can lose all of their limbs and leaves in, in a hurricane <clears throat> and still make their plant sugars photosynthesize just from uh, the, the trunk that's left. That's cool. Very cool. Both of these trails were fairly easy. The Anhinga Trail and the Gumbo Limbo Trail are both less than a mile long and pretty flat, so it didn't take us long to do both of them. So next, it was back out to the car to drive out to the Shark Valley Visitor Center. And I found out from the guy that we really didn't need to put that tarp on our car because it turns out the vultures aren't a problem anymore. But the Shark Valley Visitor Center has access to a 15 mile paved road out to an observation tower. And unfortunately, we got there too late to be able to ride the tram because they have this tram that you can ride or you can rent a bicycle because 15 miles is pretty far to get out to the observation tower. And unfortunately, the tram service stopped at four o'clock and we got there about a quarter after. So we weren't able to take the tram or rent a bicycle. So there wasn't really much else we could do. So that was the end of our day at the national park. It was on to find something else to do. Use this for your video. No, stop. <laughs> All right, so since we weren't able to do the Shark Valley tram tour, we had a little extra time. So we decided to go here at the Monster Mini Golf in Coral Springs. So we're gonna play a little indoor golf because it's got black lights and everything glows. It should be pretty fun. Nice place to escape the heat because it's indoors. And the gray is fun. There's supposed to be rain coming too, so. Yeah, big storm. Yeah, it's been raining every day, but that's okay. We're still having fun. It always ends in a rain though, so. Monster Mini Golf in Coral Springs, Florida is your one-stop shop for all things fun. Their state-of-the-art facility is complete with an 18-hole mini golf course, a nostalgic and full-fledged fun arcade room, a laser maze, and a virtual reality room that will take you out of this world. Offering excitement and entertainment for the whole family, Monster Mini Golf in Coral Springs is proud to be the premier destination for guests of all ages looking for endless fun. The cost for one round of golf of 18 holes was $12 for adults and $10 for children. 
They also offer military and senior discounts. I mean, it is. Oh, was that a hole in one? Yes. I was in here recording and I didn't even see it. What? You recorded it? I did. <laughs> hole in one. Yes. So we spun the wheel and it says she has to roll the ball with her hand on her first shot. Go ahead. Oh, terrible. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed joining us on our adventures in the Everglades today. As always, I will include links to everything in the description, so make sure you check that out. You can find links to all my other social media, as well as links to our other Florida adventures. And also make sure you are subscribed, that way you don't miss out on any future videos that I put out, because there's always something fun and exciting going on here on this channel. So, thanks for joining me. I will see you again next time. Love you guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.